have you what 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 Bayesian or like stats stuff have you have you read before before starting this book? Um, are you asking all of us or is it like yeah whoever whoever wants to to answer I guess. Okay. Not working, Olivier. I'm sorry. Not for me, at least. So before this book, I started reading this one, the Kruchki. I assume that's how you pronounce it. Kruchki, Kruchki book. The the dog. I book. pronounce it. Yeah, I pronounce it the puppy book. The puppy book. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the the Kruchki. I don't. I never know how to say it. But anyway, so that one, and um, I'm a very slow learner, so I I'm. I mean, I've read a few chapters. And the other one is the green book. Um, the Houghton book, um, Mevin Houghton books, Mevin Houghton's book, um, what is it called, Bayesian something, I don't know, it's a green book. So that, and then this one, yeah. And what, like, what do they use for Data analysis is it more like you know analytical, or or do they, do they use some type of uh, like some type of sampler to run Monte Carlo or similar simulations in that literature? Um, so it's uh, you are you asking me what this book is for, or um, what my work is around, or why what do I plan on using this? Yeah, Thanks just for... just curious. Curious on other people's experiences. I mean, in, interpret it as you wish. Like, I mean, it's no. Oh, okay. Okay, maybe someone else can go. I'll volunteer. Uh, I went through that puppy book, I don't know, five years ago, maybe more, maybe 10 years ago. It's been out for a while. Um, and I probably, I didn't really use it much after that. So I've kind of forgotten a lot of it. That book is use a lot of uh, JAGS software. I think it used JAGS and Stan, but I think JAGS is kind of a past day now maybe. <laughs> so that's one of the issues with that book. It's a great book otherwise. It's a fabulous book. I remember that much about it, but I'm trying to uh, get smart again on the Bayesian stuff. I've been working through, we're working with Python more than the R stuff, but I like Stan. So I want to get more smarter with R Stan and Stan. So this, this is why I kind of started working through uh, statistical rethinking do you know that book uh well-known book on bayesian approaches but uh and but then this book came out and I, it's a free book so it's nice that they can have a book club so i joined with you guys to try to get i wanted some of this is review for me but some of it is also like i don't know r that well so i'm mostly a pipeline guy so it's going to be also learning a lot going through this but i used a lot of uh in the past uh, pi mc python monte carlo uh library Are you familiar with it I've never, I've never used PyMC, but I mean, there seems to be, at least if you listen to this, like Alex Andorra learning Bayesian statistics podcast, and if you, if you follow him on Twitter, like the community around it seems awesome. I mean, like, you know, like reading Osvaldo Martin, who's also like a PyMC contributor. He seems like a really nice guy, judging from, from yeah. Twitter and so on. But, but is there a special reason why you want to, I mean, because you mentioned like Stan, but there's Python as well. I mean, I'm an R lover. I prefer R over Python any day of the week. Okay, I prefer R over Python any day of the week for certain tasks, not for others. Yeah. <laughs> I try to just learn. Uh, but but is there a special reason why you would like to use? Because almost all these books are now, are almost all the best books on this subject use R. So it pays to know R so you can take advantage of all this uh, material out there, in my view. There's some stuff written with PyMC, the, but the best stuff for Python is really our books. That somebody like translated the exercises and stuff into Python. Like somebody's done that with statistical rethinking. Somebody's done that with ISLR. Um, probably they're going to do it with this book as well with Bayes rules if they haven't already. So because uh, R, it's like the more lingua franca of this stuff, I think. So it pays to know it. I like Python. Don't, I like a lot. I've known. I've used Python for it since it came out. Finally, ah, it's yes. perfect, Olivier. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, yes. Too. Fantastic. Thanks, Mac. Macintosh better than Linux. Okay, I'm closing the other one. So yeah, that's basically my story <laughs> on R. If that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I was I was just curious. Like, I mean, it's just for me, it's just like such a 
good way for me to 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 learn like you know from like others experiences if you had a good book to learn then maybe like you know read the same book so, so i didn't mean to put anyone on the spot it was oh, no, you know? course, yeah. like you're curious about what, what other people's experiences are and what about you and your experiences I love statistical rethinking. I watched, I think, let's see. Oh, poor memory now. I think I, I read the book. I think I watched the 2019 video series. I uh, I watched most of the 2022 video series. I'm a big Richard McElrath. And if there's a native English speaker, please correct me on the, the pronunciation of the name is wrong. So I like, I definitely like statistical rethinking. I've done some stuff with, with Jags. It was a Coursera course from, I think it was, could have been like University of Santa Cruz or something. Uh, but like Jags, it was not love at first sight. Like the the uh, rethinking package with like Ulam or for 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 Monte or something that was love at first sight. And I am I'm halfway through regression and other stories, which is a book I I really enjoy. Uh, Anyways, I, I guess we should leave the word to Olivier. I was just curious, like, from people's experiences and what stuff you've done, like, in the meanwhile, while, while we had the audio issues. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, over to Olivier. Yeah, I'm also it's going good. through those videos, by the way, just, so, uh, just to wrap that up. I'm also going through those videos right now for the 2022 session of his uh, course. I love that. I love them. They're great. I think I'm on the same that everyone. That's good that we share like experience. I have also done like the 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 rethinking uh, experience this year. Was luckily enough like to uh, be able to audit it to audit the course. But I was like probably like I I think at one time like Richard said like uh, you will probably understand forty percent of the course and I probably like have understand twenty or maybe less. But I, I went through it and uh, I think this is a good point like to start like the reading another, another book and start the, maybe like the, 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 the presentation of the first chapter. I don't know if we have to at one moment always uh, currently like last time I checked no one like uh, writing the name for the next chapters. So maybe if someone like want to start with bias rules or I can do it, but who cares? If someone wants to uh, present the next chapter, it's good. The second one also. But we can decide that at the end, as you like. So I don't know if I share my screen or if I... Uh... How do you do that? Uh, let's go on the... for the data science. So is everyone fine with like a, uh, 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 using pull request on GitHub? If, if some people have trouble with that, uh, I think everyone in the community can help me or other people. It's not that much a big deal with uh, use this package. But if, if not, like at some times I didn't know how to do it. So it's fine. I don't know. So I will try to share that. Share screen. Send this. Sure. Does everyone see it? The bias rule book. Oh yes, please. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Uh, yes, me. Uh, I don't have the habit of Mac. I'm so bad with this computer. Uh, where is it? Here. Uh, can I? Do you see it full screen? Because if trouble with full screen, yeah. That's great for me. Okay. Computer is a mess. Okay, so let's see. Let's at least I see something. So the book is called Bias Rules. Uh, it's quite long, like it's 19 chapter, I think, if I remember correctly. So we'll be together a long time. Uh, I have a cat and kids, so maybe they would jump at times. I hope it will be fine. Um, that's it. Um, the meeting at the moment we 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 have set up like one week one chapter per week i don't know if it's good for everyone i have checked some chapter harder than others so maybe we'll have to adapt that but for the first few i think we're good and then maybe after we have to adapt that like feel free to, to set anything if the pace is too speed not enough like basically we are together so we can decide for us 
uh, as I just said, like, oops, sorry, I should have go back uh, a bit before that. Um, so are, are everyone fine with like uh, sending pull requests to this directory? If I have, if no one is speaking, I will assume they agree. But if not, like it's totally fine to just like set, do it with you one time and then you can do it. Like the first time I have submitted it, I have made an, an error and the uh, GitHub action fell and we this is very easy to correct. No need to be afraid of that. Okay. If no one's speaking, I assume it's good. C cool. It's good. Um, okay. So the pace, like I have said, one chapter per week. Everyone should contribute. We are not too many, so but we'll probably do two or three chapters to everyone. So as you like, even if you have more chapters that you really want to do, and you can like already subscribe in the um, in the Google Sheets uh, that is in the link of the for the science Slack channel. Uh, I like get one advice from Richard McEldred, the author of uh, statistical rethinking. This is the advice that he gave that to follow the flow. I think it's quite hard to read a book or follow an online course. And because maybe a lot of time everyone wants to understand everything, but sometimes you don't need to understand everything, but you just need to follow the flow. And maybe the stuff that you haven't understand, you will maybe able to understand letters and you shouldn't like, uh, you should persevere and follow the flow. And uh, we are all together into that that we understand and share experience. But I think it's good advice. So I wanted to share with you, but I think a lot of people have already seen this advice. So that's good. And obviously uh, I like also the advice that it's normal to find it hard because I think it's an hard topic. So it's good. Like if we don't understand it for the first time, it's good if we do mistake together. I'm not statistician, I'm geographer. I came from social science. You know, we are bad at math. I mean, not exactly, but that's, we are less good than people like in physics, obviously, but it's fine. Uh, Bayesian statistic. Um, so this is like the first question that define it always like with the frequentist approach, even in this book. And I like it the way they are phrasing it. So I've just copy past it. Frequent, this is, I think, an important topic. Frequentist and Bayesian method both share something. They want to learn from data. They want to understand the world through the length of data. And after it changed a bit. Uh, and that's why Beige, uh, Bayesian allow uh, using prior with new data. Um, the results they said is easier to interpret. That's why they advertise Bayesian statistic. I think it depends, but uh, this is like, a point they make in the first chapter with various examples that I like it. Um, the authors, when I said that, uh, it shine when frequentists fail. Uh, they don't give example of that, but I'm sure we'll see some uh, letters. And computer, computational tools uh, are become more and more accessible now. Like if you check like what I, I, I catch it a bit their conversation at the beginning, it started with bugs. Then you have Jags, which is another Jeep sampler. Then you have like Stan and uh, currently like you have the BRMS package also, which is another implementation of Stan, but with a wrapper in there. And I think this tool become more and more uh, easier to access without have like too much of doing computational work. I think the point they make is true. I don't know what you think about that. We can don't like, we can interrupt me or whatever. Tip and tricks from the authors. I like it also that part, so I highlight it. Uh, we are learning by doing. This is also like a good advice of Richard McElroy. Yeah, but you basically practice stuff before understanding it fully. And this is by practicing, you are learning. And this is what I hope we can do in this book club. Embrace a group mindset. We'll do mistake. I think I even faced that already. Uh, interpret bias in a context. I think this is a good advice. Uh, that the, we are working working on data is not just the hand. The hand is what we can do with data and we have to be cautious about that. So I have understand that. And practice, practice, practice. Okay, <laughs> we get it already. Uh, the setup, I haven't any kind of trouble to do it, I think. I was on Linux at that time. Uh, I already have Airstan installed 
And uh, I have to update some package. I think I have like some package that I needed to update that needed to be updated, but nothing difficult. I hope everyone is set up. If not, like we can help each other. Don't like, it's no big deal. I will maybe like bad on Windows, but I will try to figure something. Seems it good, perfect. Daughters, I have just linked their Twitter accounts and if they don't have their website, if you want to, if you want to reach to them and just say like, oh, I like your book. Sometimes like, you know, having like some comments is good. It's make you start your journey is a good way. I don't know. Uh, that's it. No need to spend too much time on that. Oops. Thinking like Bayesian. So I have reproduced one, um, uh, one uh, um, piece of uh, graphics I've done uh, because I like it. I haven't reproduced the example. So it's the first use with an example where like uh, you, are, you want to go to the spaghetti restaurant, an Italian restaurant, and you check the, um, the star in Yelp or the comment in Yelp that gives you like basically your prior information, what you know without testing the, the meat, the food. Then you test it. So that means you collect data and then you have an idea of it. So, and then you return to this restaurant, collect new data, eat more food and have another idea. So this is, I reproduce like the basic workflow, which they call a Bayesian knowledge building diagram. I think this is, as are like the examples they use before generalize, I, I think this is good. Uh, I they still insist on the ideas like boss try to learn about data. Uh, boss use data to fit, to fit model, boss make prediction, and boss evaluate hypothesis, even if they don't do it the same way. But I think that try in this chapter also to say like there's differences, but at the end, no need like to overplay them. This is all, this is what I get from it. Uh, quiz time. I don't know if you have, if you all have done the quiz time. So uh, I have I have done it and I have write a small script that allows you to count points and maybe we can share your uh, it's on the GitHub of this book down so if you go in a book down uh, in data chapter one uh, there is this like um, XLS file so you can like fill the XLS file save it with whatever's and then run the R script to get uh, the point of other people and yourself. If we do that, like, I don't think it counts for us because we are the first cohort, but maybe later they will want to do analysis on that and maybe Bayesian statistics, <laughs> Bayesian analysis. So it's no need to do it. I like it, the quiz. And yet like after in the chapters, they will use the question to make us think a bit more about it. So I've done 11. I think it's pretty obvious to do a high score. Like a lot of questions, yeah. like make more sense to common people. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, I got 11 when I did it as well. Yeah, so uh, how many have you done, uh, Gabby? Um, yeah, no, I got I got an eight. That's good. You boss. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think it's because I'm new to to Bayesian and I come from a very strong frequentist um, base. Huh? Not pun, no pun intended, but. Um, so my background is very strong in, in frequentist analysis. So I think that because now I'm learning about Bayesian and stuff, then that's why it's balanced, I think. I, I think it's very good. Like, so you will, uh, you will help us a lot. <laughs> so you will, you will provide another, another opinion. I think it's great. Okay. Uh, so feel free to, to complete the, the small XLS, open another one. It's the Bay... Um, I decided so that everyone can make um, a new file, but we can change that. Like it's not very important. Okay, now we are starting to do it. In the the first difference between Bayesian and frequentist for the authors is how they define probability. I think it's a good point. On the Bayesian philosophy, uh, it's a bet, so it's a relative plausibility relative plausibility of an event. Like let's say like. Um, uh, I will make uh, the examples I reuse is like, uh, I don't know, uh, an election when someone have like 90% chance holds to be elected. So if you are in the Bayesian, you will think it's 0.9 to be elected. 
If you are in frequentist point of view, they argue that you will think it's as a O on one, and then you have to repeat the election to know really well. This is what they, so this is how they introduce frequentist philosophy is a long run relative frequency of repeatable events. So the probability is not anymore like a bet, like it is, but just like we are counting uh, events, repeated events. Like, feel free to correct me if I misunderstand something or had something. But I, I, I like it start with that. I think it's important to get it, even if later we'll maybe not take that into too much account. Okay, should we like, should we discuss as we go, or is it should we just let you? Like? Okay. No, I think we should no. discuss as you go. If you have something to say, okay. okay. No, lose but, it. Uh, I mean, I feel that the frequentist, but now it's just like my my feeling around and like feeling is not it's not really scientific, right? But it's like the frequentist approach, like you know, ninety percent chance of candidate nine winning means that if you would run an infinite number of times experiment uh, and one candidate would win like you know 90 percent of the times in the long run but if you think in a Bayesian setting it's sort of like you get this binary or like you get this probability distribution which 90 percent probability mass of one winning but i don't really agree on sort of like like how they phrase it but i mean it's just words and so at the end of the day it's like you know it feels I'm, I, I like the, I'm super happy, I, super happy to hear others, but it seems like frequentist answer is like you know a number, and the Bayesian answer is a distribution. Uh, well, on, on that I think both frequentists use distribution. I mean, you can ask Gabby more about that, but I think you can use a distribution in a frequentist way. You know, likelihood is max, maximum uh, likelihood estimators is using distribution that you define, but. Uh, but I'm, I'm not, I, I don't think it's too much important. I mean, I, this is why I like it, the advice, like to not try to make too much distinction between them. They exist, but I don't think it's important at the end. I mean, it's important, but it shouldn't like take too much spaces. But this is, I don't it's a, think the it's point of this, um, of this quiz, but I, I mean, I don't know because I didn't write the book, but I think the point of this quiz is to just sort of try to um, grasp the concept that if you, as, as I do, right, come from a very strong frequentist background, that you have to sort of flip your brain sometimes into thinking now differently than how you were thinking before. Because, um, because right, that's, that's what Bayesian thinking is. I think they, they pointed at the beginning of the, of the chapter or something that, uh, the way that you should start thinking about when you start doing Bayesian analysis and Bayesian models and all of that is that it's a knowledge building process instead of like frequencies that you have your data and then, oh, so now I know, right? But here it's like, you have to switch up a little bit and they are using this um, sort of day-to-day -day examples to show that. So I don't think it's I think it's important to understand how the thinking is changing between A and C, but um, because I think that's the, the the point of the exercise, if you will, right? Like how how this thinking is different than the other one based on what frequentist. Um, I don't know if I'm making myself clear, but based on what frequentist um, analysis uh, is based on and Bayesian analysis as well, right? I think it's more it's more of of that um, sort of comparing the two if you will so yeah i don't know i think it's good thanks for explaining that it's good uh but i think we'll see it later i think i have like rewrite stuff later so let's see maybe we can like re, re or re go um in these topics also um bayesian balancing acts oh so this is uh this is the, i think this was an interesting point like to illustrate that also so this is like when people who claim that they can predict the outcome of conflicts or flipping coins. And the other one who said like, she, she can test uh, the distinction between natural and artificial sweeteners. And uh, the argument they make, the authors, like, is like, uh, if you are a frequentist believers, uh, you don't think it make any kind of differences between uh, if you flip 10 coins or if you test 10 products, 
And if you can, uh, if both succeed uh, with a 10 10 success rate, uh, what can we conclude? And if you are frequentist, as the author said, you will, um, you will claim that they are, they are the same. Uh, well, if you are Bayesian, you will assume that uh, predicting uh, the, a coin flip is like saying in the future, which is unlikely, very unlikely. So people who uh, will predict a coin flip, like saying in the future is very unlikely, you will put a prior knowledge that will uh, put down um, the, 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 um, the posteriors, the the, um, the idea that the claim of zero four, I don't know if I pronounced it correctly, uh, will, will, will be harder to, uh, to uh, maintain. So I think it was a good, um, good idea. I mean, this was this example, like speak to me. Uh, all a prior knowledge will influence the same result. Like basically they are both predicting all uh, zero and one uh, results. But one zero and one results is totally different. The process to generate this O and one result is totally different than the other one. So this was a good yeah, example. I mean, I thought that was like, I, I thought it was like a really, really good example on that one because um, anyone who's ever done any studying of probability knows that you're not going to be able to predict the, uh, the Zufo um, example of the coin flip. No one's going to be able to do that. That's you know that you know that's been set true for centuries whereas the, the 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 second example there about the tasting natural sweetness and the versus the sugar is much more plausible so if you're a frequentist you can't really take uh, those hundreds of years of history because we know the probability of flipping a coin is 0.5 and we know we, we, we've known that for centuries basically do you, do you think this is a bit of a straw man no i mean i think the frequentist is not gonna say oh i don't okay. you know I don't think it's quite that black and white. I think a frequentist has approaches for this kind of thing where they change their model a little bit, maybe to account for other alternative hypotheses of what's going on with the uh, with Zufu, right? Um, I don't know because I'm not that much a frequentist, but I just assume it's not quite that simple. Like, oh, these guys have been doing it wrong all this time. <laughs> it's a bit of a straw man, in my view. <laughs> a little bit. No, I, I agree. It's awesome. it's a bit provocative. Yeah. Totally. I agree as well. And going back to Richard Makarath, which we talked about in the beginning. I mean, he's not really like complaining about frequentist methods. He just says like, you know, you can solve, this is how I solve problems and it's useful for actual problem solving. But, but I guess maybe the authors are, I don't know if they're stemming from another root, like their root is Bayesian statistics and then like Bayesian statistics is a thing. But I'm guessing that a lot of us like, we want to solve a problem and then like frequentist methods are one tool, Bayesian methods are another tool. And then depending on the problem and convenience and circumstances, you might prefer one over the other. So. I agree with that. That's, that's the way to look at it. I think that's kind of what doesn't, isn't that what they'd say in statistical rethinking? Something along those lines is said and I know. He makes some kind of point in statistical rethinking and say, hey, these kinds of examples are kind of, you know, straw. I think he's the one, that, I don't know if he's the word straw man, but he said these kind of examples are always in the first chapter of Bayesian books. He's like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> no, no, I, I agree it's a bit provocative, but the idea is, I think we should keep the idea that uh, maybe frequentists don't add prior the same way, but they still will adapt the model they use. They will probably not keep the same, uh, they will still focus on the data without adding some kind of prior. Uh, but I think this is also like the, the, with this example, I think the author want to show the power of prior and all a prior can uh, leverage uh, in one way or in another, which can be both good and bad, I think. Because like, obviously you have more power and then what you do with that? You can, maybe we can, I think this was an interesting discussion, I think. I agree. Okay. Asking question, uh, what the chance that we actually have a disease versus I do not have the disease, what the chance that I will have gotten this disease? This is also playing a bit on the frequentist uh, null hypothesis, I feel. But um, uh, the example was, I, I reproduce it because like they don't produce like the, the code, so you can like play with it more easily. Uh, 
And so like, this is just like, um, that this I well this is a classic I think like if we read like a first course on Bayesian or even probability we'll do that like it's a sensibility versus specificity stuff and it was I mean I liked it no I will not insist too much on it I think it's it's good to see like uh, it's a good introduction to um, I don't never know the name. Um, uh, it's not joint probability, but like um, probability when you know something. I don't have too much stuff to say about it. Uh, it's a good exercise to do. Uh, quick history lessons. Well, this chapter was a bit like, uh, I, don't, I don't know, this part, I mean, uh, they bring back the advance in computing. The idea like at the beginning, the frequentist mindset was dominant. Uh, I like it, the ideas of revelation of subjectivities. I think this is also something that you find a lot in uh, Richard McElroy's ID and books. That's uh, mm, subjectivity is not a dirty world anymore, which before like we wanted to be like, very, very focused objective. No, I think everyone know at least that uh, we have to define that and it's very hard. But I don't think this chapter was very useful. I don't know what you think about that, but if not, I go. It was quick. I, I still like this sort of history thing is if anyone's read uh, Judah Pearl's the book of why, um, I think it's, it's so interesting how he sort of describes the history of statistics and like the feuds between uh, different famous statisticians. Like, I mean, that's not related to what they described exactly, but I, I still, I, I always like this sort of like tidbits when you can sort of, yeah. you know, say a bit with the... With the uh, I, I like, like it, but I, I, found, I found this chapter, this part of the chapter was liking. I agree, like, yeah. it's interesting to read about that, but yeah. I, uh... I agree with you. The, uh, you know, again, going back to statistical rethinking which is a book i really do like um he says that one of the main things about computing made possible for you to like what he called draw the owl in his lectures but it makes it possible for you to just use a computer and you just make a model and then just use it you don't have to use all these cookbook recipes you used to have to use and you still do use because people speak that language in the frequentist world but part of the reason for all those recipes because you couldn't just get a computer to do these big numerical monte carlo simulations you had to you you had to do things based on cookbook recipes and formulas because that's all you could do, right? I mean, that's part of the real advantage of the computing is you can actually apply these Bayesian techniques that otherwise would have been prohibitively difficult. Maybe people, people would, oh, I would love to use this, you know, Bayesian method to analyze my data, but it's impossible because of so many parameters and everything. So I'm going to go off and I'll just assume it's a Gaussian distribution, blah, blah, and use these p-tests or whatever because that's what you can do right now. You have this flexibility with the advances of computing. That's, I think, the point that really should be made here in this yeah. part of the book. Yeah, you're right. I, 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 could, like, uh, I could take one of my whole class book, and we, we had the, the whole table of uh, the distribution of students, you know, because we didn't have computer at that time. I'm not that old. Uh, so we have the table printed, and then you check like with the numbers. and. <laughs> So yeah, it, it needed to be a, a printed table. So obviously you write on that, I think. I've used those tables. <laughs> <laughs> they I've used those tables too. And to even to make it worse for me, I've taught using those tables, you know, because oh. that's what in my university, many, many, many years ago, not now, I don't do that anymore. But that's what they, the math department where I was teaching, that was what they were using. So, of course, I'm 255 years old. And <laughs> yes, I've, I've used those tables. Uh, I, I remember. Are, are we, bad. are we talking about the tables where, like, you know, C, C value and then you see a number and then sort of you go left and right? Because there was this story on Twitter. I don't know if it's true or not. That sort of Fisher. Like the reason why it's like, you know, 95% uh, CI or like P value 005 is because someone else had like copyrighted those tables 
and Fisher could only use like a certain range of values and it just choose like that one because I don't know if it's true. Like it's true that there's a story that says it on Twitter, but then like, you know, yeah, maybe I shouldn't trust everything I read on Twitter though. <laughs> I don't know if it's true, but it highlights well the fact the importance of computer <laughs> democratizing methods, at least. Um, okay, so if we check the book, it's divided in four parts. The first part is foundation. I, I think it's very classic, but I like it insists a lot in the modeling part. I mean, it's a subtitle of the book, like. So I think the author wants to. Um, work a lot i mean work a lot in the modeling parts um we will see distribution we'll see the family some i i think i haven't checked it but if you check the first episode said like we'll obviously do a bit of uh distribution conjugation i don't know you said that but this is it and uh that will lead us to the second part where uh you we all know i mean i don't know but like it's well uh People have demonstrated like when you use some kind of prior with another kind, uh, it's all bring you to um, some other kind of distribution. This is what it means that use uh, conjugate families. But what happens when we can't use that knowledge? We used uh, MCMC, the Monte Carlo uh, chance. And that brings the second part of the book uh, where uh, conjugate is not an option and uh, we need the computing power to do the posterior analysis. Then on the third part, it's three chapter. It's a bit smaller. Um, the Bayesian, uh, then we'll see the regression and classification problem, like the same kind of, uh, the always same kind regression is with uh, quantitative and classification is really more qualitative data. Uh, but that will be the first time also, like we will use the idea of a response variable and predictor variable. I think on the first chapter, we'll just work on one variable. Uh, which is also, I think, classics. And then we'll see hierarchical Bayesian model uh, to understand the gr grouping, the, uh, the grouping data uh, and extending um, on the surge unit. So the, the chapter kind of follow themselves and they improve the, the add blocks to each other, to my understanding. So I think it's a good idea. Uh, I also listened to a podcast of the one of the authors. Uh, and she said, like, they usually, in class, not all the classes go to the, yeah, she called model. So we can be proud if we do that. Uh, summary. Well, posterior knowledge uh, is balancing information from data and prior knowledge. Uh, it's hard to think more of wave of data. This is my world. Like data is coming, we updating our knowledge, more data updating, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then they extend a bit the scale of this reasoning, saying like maybe if two people are doing that, they will come together to an analysis to the same posterior knowledge. Um, in research, I'm not sure this is work like, working like that, but I, I kind of hope. Um, okay. Uh, I will do the exercise before like going too far. Do you want to share or discuss the exercise? I will take my block and share it maybe. We can, I, I like it, the exercise. I like the pedagogy of it. I don't know if it was, if you have done it, but uh, I like the idea that it's, it's, it speaks to students very like uh, in the basic way. The first way, like without knowing anything, we, had, we will try to make analogy of a work Bayesian workflow with something like you can relate to. I, I, I like this exercise. I don't know. I can share my, my answer if you want, or if, if, if not important, no need, as you like. I haven't published it, but because I haven't. <laughs> if, if not, I will just check one that I found out. I like it, the, the first one, I, well, because I didn't think it was that good. The second one was good, like the tweet one. So if you have a few minutes, try to do it. I think it's funny. We should maybe tweet it if you like. Uh, Bayesian thinking, um, uh, yeah, the, 
so my ex my my example of my reply my answer for the the three one is like Bayesian thinking is too uh, too difficult. That was my prior. I have done one course. Okay, I can do it, but I will need a book club. That was my posterior. I don't know if it makes sense. <laughs> um, well, the other one is kind of a, another version of this one, but like trying to put yourself in other shoes. So I like it also. And it's very, they are very easy. Like, uh, sh sh sure, I can. I uh, I will put this is learned by Asian the podcast, and I will put it uh, letters if you want in the chat. Uh, Ronald. The perfect. Thanks. The other example. Uh, um, are the well, I like it doing them. Like this is no, no, no. The I think the one that I struggle more while the seven one. Uh, it was like uh, found a topic where you know something, and uh, then add an hypothesis, and then uh, define if it's frequentist of Bayesian. So this, this this one like I spend most of the time, but I I think this example like they are very basic, but they're very, very emphasized like the idea what my prior, what my uh, data is, and what's my posterior, and to draw something to start drawing stuff. So I think that just laid out the foundation for next chapter. But yeah, if you want to share, I can give more example or we good as you like. We'll try to push the link now. Yeah, I think these exercises are meant more for like this thought experiments. You know, sit there and reflect on these things. Really. There's no <laughs> truly wrong answers, I guess. Yeah, they're, they're, they're very big toyish. This is a very yeah. toy example, but it's good like um, to have toy example at the beginning. Like imagine myself with students. It's good to start with something like, uh, I don't know, not too mathematical and to relate to them. And this two fit this two box, like not mathematical and relate to them. So they can like, next time they do a, like, uh, the, because next time it's bias rule. So you will have an actual, uh, real multiplication of posterior uh, prior and data to get the posteriors you will do it and so it's good like to introduce it before doing the mathematical aspect or the probabilistical aspect i think so i but totally yeah, so agree you... with you too no it's good because remember these books this book is also intended for people who have never had any contact with base analysis or bayesian analysis before so if it's the first time that they are approaching, or maybe you're teaching this for the first time for people, for students who have never had, you know, have never even heard of this before, then this is good because then you have something to hold on to, to oh yeah, the posterior. It's like when I saw that, that example. And in my experience teaching statistics to students, well, I'm an ecologist, so I teach to, to biologists or scientists and, and other ecologists like me. Um, so, what I see, there's a lot of issues with is that students sometimes understand, for example, the equation, but when you, or the mathematical aspect of things sort of, but when you tell them to translate that into words or like explain this to me in layman, term, layman terms, and layman terms, I think that's the phrase, I don't know, um, then they can't. It's, it's like they can't go from math to to English or Spanish, which is my language, but um, they can't go to, to the words, you know. So it's um, so I think I think it's great that they started with this. And if you're very advanced, then skip this part. You already know this. But if you don't, it's there for you. Okay, I, I try like copy past the link, but I thought I will I will do that later. Uh, the the episode name is the, the the podcast name is learning Bayesian statistics, and the episode is forty two and is how to teach and learn Bayesian stat with Mine de Cucu. I hope I pronounce her name well. That's it. And you get also a discount of the book if you want to buy it, <laughs> which also was nice. Okay, so I think we're good um, now. 
And I totally agree with you, like uh, Gary. I think like uh, if if you have, I I still done the exercise because I'm stupid, and uh, if the author have put it, I think it was for a reason. <laughs> uh, okay. So anyone want to volunteer to be like the next uh, to present the bias rule? Raise your hand. I'm going to be traveling next week, so I'm not even sure I'm going to be here. So I'm going to not raise my hand. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> okay, I can raise mine, but you definitely have to raise yours next week. Okay. I guess. Okay. I will do it. I will do it. This, this, also, I have start. I have read it. It's a very nice chapters, and I like. Um, I like the think I'm stupid because I mean, at least the, I think them I'm slow because I think they really take my hand. You know, they're very like, so that's good. That's good. I like them for the moment. <laughs> so we'll do it next week. I will uh, put my name, but someone do like the, the other one. Okay. So do you have any- Sounds like, fair. Do you have like, oh, do you think we should change something? Like this is my first time doing it, so I'm open to every comments, every recommendation on how to do it. Uh, we'll probably code a bit more and do a bit more calculations. Maybe we'll share. I, I will share R on something. I don't know. Obvious code, whatever. Yeah, there wasn't uh, much coding content in 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 the first chapter, so we we're not yeah. going to be coding a lot this uh, this week. I think there's yeah. more coding stuff to come. But th that's why I try to add a bit more, like on the review, like adding something like to reproduce the card or whatever, like so it can be easier. I also like it use I use uh, diagram here. I don't know how you spell it. This is just a wrapper of Grassviz, make easy to make DAG and stuff like that. But there are other tools, and if you are using them, uh, keep in mind like to have you have to add them in the description uh, file in the GitHub repo. What, what is that thing called, you said? Uh, I use, uh, because like in Bayesian, you use a lot of DAG, um, diagram acyclic graph, I think. Yeah, yeah, which no, one? No, directed, directed. And I use, I use it, I, I'm spelling it on the chat, diagram. Oh, no, I know about DAGs. Oh, that's the package that you're, Yeah. okay. So you can do DAGs in there because yeah it, it it's do basically every kind of it's it's a wrapper of two other library what which one is mermaid which is mermaids i don't know if i spell it correctly which is uh to make like some kind of diagram on on markdown and another one is like uh graph viz which uh have way more functionality and i use it the you can you can see this is basically like this is very easy. Like it's it's literally pseudo card. It's not. I can go back, and I recommend using. Oops, sorry. I recommend using. I mean, uh, this is very flexible approach, but it will not to. Uh, so this is like you just define uh, a gra graph this option object, then you said like you want uh, a a D graph a directed. Uh, uh, graph, not an, uh, an acyclic one. And then you, you, you create your nodes, then you create your hedge, and that's it. I mean, you, you, can, you can copy past my stuff. And this is, this is not too hard. And I, the doc is very easy. Like the doc is, 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 is super great. The documentation is real. <laughs> Have you used Daggery, Olivier? Yeah, I, I use it. It's awesome if you want to check more casual, uh, causal stuff, like see the backdoor pass and stuff like that. But if you want to do a quick graph, I found Mermaids and uh, graph this easier. You know, if you just want, you don't want to do to check stuff, you just want to uh, display something. This is more. This this will not test anything. This just display stuff. Okay. No, that was exactly the the information I was I was fishing for. Uh, okay. Thank you. But there are, there are plenty of more. I'm, I'm not like advertising one. Just pick one and, and, and seem to add it. <laughs> if not, it will not. Diagram R, this one I have added to the GitHub repo. So the um, Docker is already updated. 
That's it. I need to jump out. Thank you yeah, for this call. Too. See you yeah. next week. Bye. Th thanks you all. I think I will. I will Thank go you, too. Oliver. Or Oli and, How do you, and, is it and, Oliver or Olivier? Oh, I don't mind. Use whatever. <laughs> it's Olivier. But I, I Olivier. know like okay. for Spanish people and English people, it's very hard. So I don't care. <laughs> I don't need any better. <laughs> no, no, no big deal at all. <laughs> Thank you. Much appreciated. Okay. Gabby, you're um, muted if you're saying something. And and if you have other stuff to say, like said it uh, either on the air for data science Slack or whatever. Fantastic. Well, so bye. I have to go Thank to you. Me. It was a pleasure. Bye.